Mr. Smoke. That's a lot of smoke, Kevin. No, we have 11 mil. What? Oh, wow. Battery fire. Wait, what? All right, guys, I'm Kevin, and this is my biggest mistake of 2020. This is a 1986 Audi 5000 S with a turbo. So if you remember anything from the first Winter Beer series, it's the same engine as I had in the Audi 200, or at least close to it, newer generation. But... Under the hood, which the hood latch actually works on this car. And so do the hood struts. We have more or less the same thing that was in my wagon. 10 valve turbo CIS system that's awful. This guy already has some of the stuff that I ended up replacing the last motor. It's just a pretty big mess. And it seems like every single one of these cars has some sort of like hack job wiring going on. Probably don't need that. Looks like the previous owner did some work. There's like new spark plugs in here and there's a new distributor on it. So they're trying to diagnose the no spark condition, but I don't even know if that's the case. It could be a crank sensor, it could be a cam sensor, it could be the ECU. There's a number of things it could be. And on the outside of the car, missing the front grille, there's actually two of them in the back seat. Pretty minimal rust, it's a Southern car. It's part of the reason I was kind of interested in it. Um, but it's got these janky fog lights rigged up. It's clearly been smashed up in the front end a bit. You got bumpers hanging off that's I mean, it's on there pretty good, so. Paint's cracked. Looks like it's got about a couple millimeters worth of Bondo and paint here. My favorite mirrors from last time, the ones that do everything. Aerodynamic, that's the most important part. Missing some lug bolts. The brakes actually look like they're in decent shape. Um, I did pull the Carfax on this and it was driven pretty regularly up until about two years ago. So once it sat, you know, it was in, Looks like it was sitting in decent shape, so it's not like the brakes are all seized up or anything. Yeah. Oh, there you go. No keyhole, but you can stick your finger in here and kind of figure out where the latch is if you smash on it enough. So I haven't even really looked in here. That's the first time I've opened this. Uh, missing some lights. It's a timing belt cover. Nice. There's a clutch. There's a timing belt. Uh oh. Brake master cylinder, it's not a good sign. Under the dash is a bunch of, we call them Kevin switches now, because of the last car I bought with the uh, the flip start and the push button. Rear main seal, throw bearing, bulbs. So this could be a lot more bad than I thought. So the inside, first thing I notice is that the alternator is on the driver's side floorboard. Door panel for the passenger side is on the driver's side seat. Oh no, there's an ECU and there's a bunch of wires out of it. Um, yeah, it's not good in here. There's mold up here. I mean, it has an interior, I guess. So that's more than Matt can say. It's old and musty and there's spiders everywhere. There's probably a lot more surprises that I haven't found yet that we're gonna find. Ooh. We got a lot of work to do. All right guys, so this is my 2020 winter beater. Let's see if we can get it started. Who knows, might work out, might not, but we'll find out. Your relays are all pissed. 
Can you uh, watch this thing? I'm supposed to be getting zero volts when there's nothing behind the hall sensor and four volts when there is. Right. How much am I looking for? Just crank it for a second. It's like zero point zero two. Certainly not four. I don't know if I got this in here great, but can you? You should be able to. Oh, yeah. Well, no, pull it's the connect rotor. It's connected to. Oh yeah, we pull the rotor off and then you just spin it. Or put it, you could just put a screwdriver or something in between there. That's all it's doing is a contact. Well, it looks like it's on, on a solid, so right now it should re be reading four. If it's reading. Right. <laughs> That's how big a 38 was? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. It didn't have to be in far enough. Oh, well, that's correct. Damn it. So you've got rotationals. Yeah. So that's everything there is good. We have 12 volts here when the car is, or when this is disconnected at the center. Yeah, this can be wrong entirely, well, I but check. that's still not changing the fact that it's no, not it's sparking all the time. I, I just meant you could eliminate this from the equation by going from here straight to a coil and seeing if you can get it to repeatedly spark. So if it's charging the coil, you can manually discharge it instead of, instead of waiting for this wiper to come around, in which case you know, obviously these things wear and the gaps get wrong and they don't make contact with the coil, so... I, I mean, you can never tell by looking at it. So I could understand that, but it's not very electrical. No. But.
It runs. <laughs> well, it's a fog machine too, apparently. Oh yeah. yeah. Been it's factory for option. A while. So what was it? The computer? Distributor. It was a distributor. Yes. Yeah, that one's a single window on the hall sensor, and the hall sensor is like the actual sensor part is like 90 degrees away from where this one is. So this is just wrong. the wrong distributor. Nice. So I pulled the front end off so I could start getting at stuff to make it kind of run. I was worried about the leak on the seal on injector number three. So I started to pull things apart and uh, everyone wants to know what their turbo looks like, right? You have a turbo car. Well, looks pretty clean in there. It hasn't eaten too much, right? Yeah, well, it's completely seized and it doesn't spin at all. and everything is coated. Oh, 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 it's spinning. Bare barely, but it's spinning. Oh, maybe it's just oil gunk. Okay, this might be okay. These are the whole reason I had to pull the intake manifold off. Well, actually these plastic things. So for a CIS injection, you have these mechanical uh, like pop-off injectors. So instead of a normal fuel injector that's initiated by an electric pulse that opens it up and lets out the pressure, this has a pressure wave that comes through and opens it up at a certain PSI. So basically it's completely mechanical. What the reason I took them out was because there was a leak on the intake manifold side right here on one of the O-rings. So normally people just take these out and just replace the O-rings on this little cap and there, and that seals up the uh, manifold essentially. So there's these brass fittings and normally these plastic things kind of right on top of there. And then there's another O-ring that goes between here and the head and the injector seals on the inside of this plastic. Well, they don't make these anymore, unfortunately. Um, but also, they didn't really come out in a single piece. So I cannot reuse these, and I'm trying to find replacements. Napa said they have some, but I don't believe them. So I was supposed to pick them up on Friday, but they haven't said anything yet. They took my money, so we'll see what happens there. Um, but basically, since it started to crumble, the pieces went inside the head so now I have to take the intake manifold off to clean all this stuff and to replace all of it and hopefully this will make it seal much better and I'll be able to clean everything else up. Basically, this cap is just pressed onto here and that just kind of protects the end of it and gives you a cone for the spray pattern. But you have to take this off to get the O-ring that's on here, these guys, which are actually so brittle and old that most of them are coming off in just pieces and they're like super hard. You can just crack them in half. Um, and then these plastic guys that they don't make anymore are the replacement for these which just fell apart when I took them out. So I'm cleaning not only the cap and under the cap, because there's a bunch of carbon buildup in there and that's just gonna make your spray pattern go wherever it wants, but also been lifting up the little pintle in here and flushing brake clean backwards to the injector so it cleans out the little screen that's inside. Also pushing brake clean through this way. So just by Putting a little brake clean in here and then pressurizing with air, you're able to get it to basically actuate like the injector would be when the engine's running. 
So fresh o-ring here, fresh o-ring on the end, then this assembly slides into plastic bit, which threads into the head, and then you have your injector and cup and seal. You gotta take that outside. That's that's bad. <laughs> I don't I think the turbo's turboing. No. You think it's oiling though? I think it's oiling. What? I don't think the turbo's turboing, but I think the turbo's oiling. Why? Because it feels like shit when you try to spin it. Well, yeah, but it was spinning versus before when it, I had to use a wrench to get it to go, and then it was like. I'm not overly confident in that <laughs> reason. Does it get big or does it get fixed? It spins pretty freely. So what size turbo are you going to put on this thing? I'm still not overly confident that that matters. Do you want to spin it now? No. It looks dirty. I'm not, saying, dirty. I'm not saying that it's not leaking, but I think it is spinning. I don't know. That always sucks. Try to start it. Good. You even continued spinning on shutdown for a brief moment. Yeah. It doesn't mean that it's not literally doesn't mean that, yeah, it's just, just a big oil burner. My retinas are melting. Get right in there. Really sending hot. That bottom nut looks pretty wet there. Yeah, it does. But I didn't touch that part. Got the new ABS module. So now I have brakes and that's nice. Um, the master cylinder is still leaking because I stripped a little bit trying to get the plugs to seal before and now I swapped them out for a flange head bolt and a crush washer uh, so that's still a little leaky only when I press on the brakes but that's fine for now we'll leave that um, last time I updated we were open down pipe and just discovered that the cat was completely gutted out uh, so right now we're just running open down pipe I wanted to get a chance to drive around a little bit just in the parking lot see if clutch is bad because Basically, the car came with a bunch of parts in it, the master cylinder, the timing belt, all things that needed to be done, and something else that it came with was a clutch. So I'm hoping it doesn't need that, but it probably does. Uh, I rigged up the timing cover and made some new fancy things for that so it'll stay off of the, the cam gear, and the intercooler is zip tied to the front, but I want to try to start it and try to roll around. So I also discovered today that the cold start valve or the injector actually isn't firing at all. So we're gonna use some brake clean to start it anyway.
sounds like it has so much potential to be rowdy, but it's so not rowdy. Some power. Uh, there's not a bunch of fluid everywhere. It looks like you know, kept their coolant together. We have brake fluid in there, it's not leaking too terribly. Um, there's definitely oil still on the turbo. I have a new one on the way, not a new one, but a used one. Uh, that and the power steering pump because this one's leaking and spraying fluid all over the place, so that's not helping either. But it came pretty far away from where we used to be when I first got it, so. I guess I'm happy with it. Um, once I get charging, I'd like to actually drive it on the road. Um, the brakes feel awful, so I gotta figure that out. I might need another bleed, because uh, I just put the ABS module in, so maybe there's a pocket of air or something caught up in there, but uh, yeah. Drove around the parking lot, made a bunch of noise. That sounds cool. So, leave it at that for now.